Hey guys, Leanna here. It's Tata's Tuesday and we're going back to Fallout 4 because there has been a not so minor bit of controversy surrounding, hello Momo, surrounding uh, the protagonist of the game and the trailer. So I've queued up the trailer to the part that's causing so much contention and I'm going to roll it. Here we go. Let's go, pal. It's a white guy! Oh, doom. Doom, doom, doom. Let's get a slightly better. There we are. That's, we got the graphic now. Doom! It's a white man in the Fallout 4 trailer. And some people have claimed that combined uh, with a story about a uh, information that came from uh, a disgruntled former employee of Bethesda that the main campaign of Fallout 4 is going to be locked onto a male protagonist. And you, you can imagine how certain corners of the internet are taking this. Um... I have a really hard time believing that the Fallout franchise would, would suddenly, for no apparent reason, reverse itself this way. Uh, I am not going to even comment on this, this rumor from this disgruntled former employee because there's a reason they call them disgruntled, okay? They're not the most reliable sources. Now, that doesn't mean they're lying. It, it just means that information changes or they may not have been privy to certain decisions and they're more likely to just naturally take things in the worst possible light because they're disgruntled. Okay, moving on. So let's, hypothetically speaking, let's take this white guy default game trailer thing. This isn't the first time we've seen this in a game that, you know, has the ability to customize your your main character in game. We've seen it with Dragon Age with the default appearance for Hawk. Um, we've seen it with um, you know uh, Mass Effect with the default appearance for Shepard. It took till Mass Effect three to actually get you know uh, the Femshep on a on a box cover art. But that doesn't mean the game itself is in any way taking away from, you know, the, the amount of time spent in developing the female version of the protagonist. And it's important for this reason to separate game marketing from the actual game itself. Are they connected? Absolutely. Do, uh, are we limited in, in our advanced opinions of the game based on the marketing the company decides to release? Absolutely. But bad marketing does not mean a bad game. Uh, and I, I did say, you know, when I first saw the Fallout 4 trailer, it's like, oh, people are going to make a big deal out of this. And sure, they did. So, you know, in, in that case, unless Bethesda was actually looking to uh, cultivate controversy, I think it was a mistake to, to do it that way. But if they would pulled away and it had been a black woman with a ponytail, would that have reduced the level of upsetness or would that have just gotten other people upset? Um, some would say, well, it doesn't matter. Then the right people would be upset. I'm not so sure that's the case in terms of a company. Money is money and they're supposed to stay apolitical. So I, I can't really say that. What I can say is that based on what I have learned from talking to developers and yada, yada, yada. These choices to focus on uh, white male as default and everything else as a variation from the norm, uh, it, it comes down to, well, focus groups and testing and all that stuff. And this is where we get into a concept that is, is done in um, cultural studies, uh, intersectional studies, uh, social studies in general, sociology a lot, philosophy is, is where the term came from. It's not just gender studies, but there is some of that too. That's why we're talking about on Tata's Tuesday. And that's the concept of othering. 
and othering to be simple. This is a bit of a, you know, uh, uh, simplification to what, you know, Simone de Beauvoir and others intended. But in, in this case, it's white man is default. Every other permutation of race or gender is other. Um, and, and this is important because of, you know, the, the theories that say that, uh, aspirations are affected and, and approaches to people are affected by the way people see a real baseball player or a real football player or a real doctor looking as opposed to a female, uh, football player or a, uh, um, soccer. I mean, sorry. Um, my stepdad had smacked me for that one. Um, you know, the, uh, uh, or the one I like is lady doctor. And when I hear lady doctor, I think of a gynecologist, but people sometimes say lady doctor when they mean it's a female doctor, right? And the reality is the concept doctor, lawyer, president, CEO, has no gender attached to it until we culturally attach a gender to it. And that's where we start getting othering. And that's where it starts becoming a, um, you know, an, an issue when, when we study things from, you know, the perspective of where, how do I put this? Gender studies, I had this discussion with somebody, gender studies is not supposed to be about pushing an ideology. Gender studies is literally supposed to be the study of gender. And that means going in and exploring not just, you know, where these, where the genders diverge on certain issues, but also not falling prey to assumptions about where those divergences come from. So, you know, for a long time, it was assumed that, you know, boys just naturally liked certain things more than girls do. But more and more, uh, solid research has shown that it's not so much a natural biological preference for one thing or another, because I mean, that just throws uh, biodiversity and individuality out the window. That's not how human beings work. You can't breed people to have certain preferences or trust me, people would be doing it a la Aldous Huxley's Brave New World. So, you know, it's not that. They, they find more and more that it's social programming and, and various ways um, babies, infants, and young children are treated that are, are just as likely, if not more so, to shift their thinking into what is possible, what is socially acceptable, and what is ideal. And that's, we get into things like othering and things like that. Othering is one tool we use to sort of, you know, uh, try to figure this out. And I mean, the one I um, come across all the time that personally just bugs me, and I've gotten better with dealing with it, but it, it does still irritate me. And I'll say why, but the term is girl gamer. I'm not a girl gamer. I'm just a gamer because I don't think there's boy gamers and girl gamers. There are just gamers. Gamers describes people who love video games. And, you know, I don't think we should be segmenting beyond that. We're not white gamers. We're not cisgendered gamers. We're not transgendered gamers. We're not female gamers. We're not Chinese gamers. We're not Bosnian gamers. You know, we're not Swahili gamers or, or Punjabi gamers or, you know, gamers from the Emirates. We're just gamers. And, you know, I, I think that human beings are far too complex. And yes, marketers love to, you know, split things up by demographics, but that's that's for tracking. They, they want to see who's buying their products, but that's when they do that stuff, they're tracking an ideology more than anything. They're tracking a worldview that is generally sort of ascribed to men or ascribed to women. It's not, you know, saying all women think this way or all men think this way per se. It's they're, they're going for attitudes. And that's, you know, 
advertising and marketing are, are some of the most cutthroat industries you'll ever get into. They don't have time to be fancy, politically correct, or, you know, use these academic terms that aim for precision and a lack of assumptive terminology more than words that are inherently easy to understand. Um, and that's why this stuff is important important to discuss and important to keep an eye on. And it's important to not uh, just naturally assume that your protagonist must be a white guy unless there's a compelling reason for them not to be a white guy, right? Or that your game must be set in America unless there's a compelling reason to not be set in America. I think that if there's a studio set in, you know, um, in Germany or... Uh, let's pick Finland, you know, I, I think that people should be able to make a game um, based in, in Finland. Man, a game based in Helsinki would be hilarious. You wouldn't be able to get your car over a certain uh, speed in the city because of the cobblestones. And, uh, you know, people would be rip roaring drunk when the sun goes down and then hung over during the day. It'd be it'd be very interesting, a game based in Finland. Uh, as you can tell, I've been to Finland and it was a transformative experience. But, oh, ah, what's going on? Uh, this is a sign I've been talking too long, but I am going to wrap this up on that note. God, that was only 10 minutes, computer. I clearly have you set to be too sleepy. But will I yell at my computer? That's sort of where I'm going. And what I was going to say before my computer so rudely interrupted me is that Othering is an important concept to keep in mind, but it's not the only concept to keep in mind. And I don't think that the the level of uh, outrage and scandal baiting that we've seen here is at all helpful. I think we have to talk about these things, not shout about these things. And the this cascade effect of people complaining and then other people being, you know, quote unquote, triggered by the complaints and them counter complaining. It's, it's not good for the industry and it's not helpful. And this is why I do these videos, to try to get some, some concrete um, tools and concrete terminologies. And I, I was intending to talk about uh, toxic masculinity this week. Maybe I'll do that for, the, for tomorrow's video because toxic masculinity isn't really a, a, a woman's term. It's taught in gender studies, but I try to keep Tata's Tuesday based on women. And this is sort of indirectly the absence of women today. But maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Maybe I'll talk about toxic masculinity because that's another one that tends to set people off. And people really don't have to be upset about the term. There's an actual usage for the term. It's not the way it's often used in popular culture, but it is there. And uh, that's why I do these things, to try to give people the tools to make up their own minds, not to make up their minds for them.